Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Hi Dave. Hi Dave. Hey, how you going? Sorry hey. about the delay. Hey. Sorry about that. I honestly didn't foresee that one coming. <laughs> Yeah, I'm home now, getting a, a quick little coffee. <laughs> coffee. Well, it's it's only the second episode, but uh, this is an epic one because we've got two. Is that is, is that a banana? Are you making it's... a yellow a yellow skin reference? Oh my god! <laughs> I hope we're not live. <laughs> we are live. This is live. This show is live. <laughs> you serious right now? Yeah, this is a live show now. Oh, okay, it's live right now. Wow. Yes. Okay. I thought we were going to have a chat before we get started, okay. No, no, this is Wilms Front now. This is live. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Bra- okay. bra- brave New World. Lucky you didn't say anything else. Oh, no, that was dinner. <laughs> I, I just got home. I literally just walked in the door. Yeah, as I was telling you by a message. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is the brave new world of uh, Wilms Front. Everything's live, uh, uncensored, unedited. So anyone who comes on, no, no second take. Bit of warning would be nice, but yeah. I thought, oh, well, <laughs> so we're if talking you... about Gladys. We're talking about Gladys. Yes. Gladys Lou. Mm. Now <laughs> I'm going to start. Um, did you watch her on the Bolt Report last week? I had a, a look at uh, her try to explain. How she is part of the uh, the uh, the United Front, mm. and uh, yeah, well, she wasn't able to explain it, was she? Yes. Well, what I thought I'd do for the beginning of the show is just I I put together an edited package of the Andrew Bolt interview last last Tuesday evening, and so I'm just going to stop and start it, and we're going to provide analysis for it. Can I just start, were you on the committee of two chapters of the China Overseas Exchange Association? One in Guangdong from between 2003 and 2015, and the other in Shandong? Well, good to be with you, Andrew. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I cannot recall... I can't hear it, can you? uh, No, you won't be able to hear. ...that uh, from 2003 to 2015, 12 years long, uh, that if I can't recall, I can't be an active member of that uh, council, can I? How can you not recall a membership of 12 years? I mean, we've just shown your (coughs) name listed there. I've got another document I can show you of your name listed in the other association. It's two associations, association lasting 12 years, and you can't recall it? Well, I can tell you that I have never been a member of this council, and um, yeah, it can happen. Uh, They can put your name there without your knowledge. The Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague has said... Okay, so people say uh, the defence was by Scott Morrison and other... Uh, of her colleagues is that she's a, a, a new and experienced MP, but in one of her first major interviews as an MP, she'd already mastered the the art of saying, I, I can't recall, oh, it, that somebody must have added my, my name to this membership uh, w- without my knowledge. So if you're saying I can't recall in the first question, then you're after a bad start. Well, I guess it comes down to the most important factor here is that we need to have faith in our politicians and that we have this massive uh, country on our doorstep that's trying to infiltrate us. Uh, We need to have faith in our politicians. So let's just put it this way. It's very difficult to become part of the Chinese Communist Party. They don't just slot you in. This is not you don't. This is not an easy uh, group of people to get. Uh, it, it's a very, uh, very difficult party to get uh, get into because they become very influential, and and for her to be listed there, uh, I don't see the Chinese Communist Party trying to expose her. If that's the other option here. Uh, as if the as if uh, Xi Jinping put her on the list 
to try and expose her and get her kicked out of uh, Australian uh, politics. Uh, that's the only option. That's the only other theory that I could have why she would be there, right? Like there's no other. There's no other scenario uh, unless they they're trying to expose her because. Uh, any anyway, she she's not really a, a Hong Hong Konger. She her her parents are mainland anyway. Well, she says she's never been to mainland China. Well, her parents are her parents are mainland, so. Uh, she was, uh, ASIO warned Malcolm Turnbull about her. This is another thing that I discovered. Yeah, yeah, this but has been see, reported. What we're discussing right now is, it's all throughout the mainstream media. So all I'm doing is giving you information that uh, the mainstream media is covering. And it's, it's, it's really good to see that the Australian media has uh, picked up on every aspect of the subversion in Australia. And and five to ten years ago, I wouldn't have even been able to discuss these topics with anybody without being called a racist. And it just seems like Scott Morrison is so far behind. He's not a, he's not he's not up to date with what's happening today. And he's uh, yeah, he's he doesn't know what's happening with with Australian society to, to still be thinking a decade prior where you can't even... Uh, you, a decade ago, you wouldn't even been able to criticise a Chinese public figure. Now now we can, and, and Scott Morrison is still uh, thinking that it, he can, it's okay to, to say, oh, this is yellow peril, or this is uh, racism. Uh, do, you, do you have those uh, images that I sent you from the Global t Global Times? No, I wasn't able to because you sent okay. you sent them through a in, uh, encrypted okay. chat. So I'll just I'll just tell the audience uh, that uh, there's uh, the Global Times is the mouthpiece of Xi Jinping, and uh, they wrote an article pretty much. Uh, congratulating Scott Morrison on bringing up racism. Uh, the CCP has eventually, after kicking out Kevin Rudd and kif kicking out Malcolm Turnbull, uh, the CCP now has the Prime Minister that, that they want, and he's not the Prime Minister for us. Even though I would normally vote Liberal, they're all, they're all corrupt. They all need to go now. Every, almost every single one is corrupted. If our if our uh, prime minister uh, is is uh, this is the the catch cry of the the Chinese Communist Party, and and Scott Morrison just uh, announced it to the world. Uh, it's it's very damning. I was speaking with because uh, I do a show Trans Tasman Talk on on Tuesday evening with my. A New Zealand counterpart, the editor of Right Minds, uh, Due De Boer, and uh, I'm sure you're aware of this situation that it's so much worse in New Zealand. Both the the major uh, parties in New Zealand, National and Labour, have uh, what you basically call their their Chinese Communist Party uh, handlers. There's on the the Labour oh. side, there's uh, Raymond Ho, and uh, oh, oh, sorry that he. Yes, he's on the Labour side, and uh, Zhang Yang is the on the the national side, and he actually used to train Chinese Communist Party spies. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I'm 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 extremely happy. I'm so happy that the mainstream media is reporting on it, and there, although uh, although the Chinese media is saying that it is. Uh, we're we're kind of going crazy with the uh, the yellow peril worries right now. It's it's totally justified because that's what China is trying to do. Um, Gladys Liu, by the way, she was queried about Hong Kong in the past, and she was asked about the extradition bill and what she thinks about it. And all she did was say that uh, she would like a, a peaceful end. Yes, protest. I remember that she was extremely uh, vague. That's if if a politician of ours supports 
the pro-Beijing protests in, Be in, in Hong Kong, we know that they're in bed with the CCP. It's, it's that cut and dry because nobody would support a dictatorship doing what they're doing to uh, the freedom-loving Hong Kong people. And that's and that's a that's a, that's the perfect sign because you don't need any more evidence than that. If they're not, it's it's like when uh, Sam Dastiari uh, was caught giving the speech. Shanghai Sam. South yeah, and I I, I watched Q and A uh, last night <clears throat> or mon when was it Monday night? It yes. was very disappointing because. Uh, Sam Dastiari was fidgeting and he was sweating and he seemed irrational as if he was on some sort of drugs or something. <laughs> the, the only the only rational person at that entire panel was uh, John Lee. And I've been following John Lee's work for a very long time. He was by far the most intelligent person at that panel and he had the most insightful information, yet the entire panel just shut him down. Uh, some Eva Eva Cox feminist shutting down as well. Sam ah. sat down. It was very disappointing to see uh, John Lee, who is a highly educated man, and this is his topic, talking about inf in, uh, infiltration of governments, and uh, it was very disappointing. Let's just put it that way. And then I went through Twitter, and I just saw many Australian people uh disrespecting john lee as well it was it was it, it, there's still work to be done let's just put it that way people need to wake up yeah and it didn't help that scott morrison at the end of the week uh played the race card saying that to attack a migrant such as gladys Lewis is an insult to all uh chinese australians and then there was the the gotcha moment at the end of the week well how come it's it's racist to uh, question Gladys Liu's uh, connections to these uh, Chinese community groups, but it's uh, not racist to call Sam Dastyari Shanghai Sam. And he said, I don't recall saying either of those things. And then I was trying to find um, uh, the, the interview, but when he was on uh, Ben Fordham 2GB show uh, two years ago, he says Shanghai Sam about six times just in the one interview. And then he said it elsewhere in press conferences, on Facebook, on, on Twitter. He said, it, he said it everywhere. And then he said, oh, I misheard the, the the question, I didn't hear it properly, which is another bullshit politician response. I call this uh, covert white supremacy. I, it's, a, it's my own definition. What it is, is if you are someone who hangs out with only white people, your partner's white, your children are white, your friends are white, your work colleagues are all white, you live in a white bread area, uh, you don't really know much about the outside world and you think that you are superior. So someone someone like me who is uh, hangs out with a lot of immigrants, you know, travels abroad all the time, is not racist in any way, shape or form. If I criticise someone, they feel like it's their, their opportunity to step in and, and let me know that I'm a superior white man by calling me racist and how dare I punch down. And that is covert white supremacy in, in my opinion, because they're trying to let me know, hang on, don't you know that you're superior? You shouldn't be bullying these uh, these uh, lesser human beings. And that's, that's, that's my opinion of Scott Morrison. If we were to analyze Scott Morrison and think, okay, well, where did this guy grow up? Okay, well, white bread neighborhood, daddy was a cop. Uh, so therefore he's probably never been uh, threatened or punched in his life because there was always the threat of daddy stepping in. Uh, he went straight to university. He went to a, 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 an all-boys all school, which was uh, no doubt quite expensive to send uh, Scott Morrison to. Then he, then he went and got his degree. And I doubt he, he uh, achieved honours while working part-time and paying rent. He was no doubt living at home with mummy and daddy in his nice cushy uh, home while studying and that's how he achieved honours. Then after that he, he thought about going to uh, study in Canada and do theology. 
So he's, he's someone who is uh, a bit of an ideologue as well, but his dad told him, look, it's time to go get a job because you've been leeching off us for such a long time. So he's probably like uh, almost 25 years old and he thought he would leech off mummy and daddy more and, and go to Canada. He's not the Aussie battler. He is the 1%. And he's always been privileged. You cannot expect someone like that to understand geopolitics or what is happening uh, within the country because they've always been in this sheltered life. And, and I hope that explains. You've got to understand the person and that person's not equipped to be our prime minister. Yeah, that's a unique analysis and certainly something you won't uh, see uh, said on on Sky News, uh, uh, for example, or or even the ABC wouldn't wouldn't dare go that far. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I I I feel it's it's valid, <laughs> probably a little bit too far, but I don't know. I don't know. It's now you're it's in the public interests. You're in Sydney, and uh, so the the central Chinese area you often talk about is is Chatswood and which federal electorate is that in? I believe it's Gladys Berejiklian. Ah, uh, federal area. Good question. I just don't know. Because I th think it might be Benelong, uh, which is I'm not sure if you remember the the 2017 Benelong by election where John Alexander had dual British. Australian citizenship and so had to resign and recontest uh, Benelog and there was a Christina Keneally was the the Labour candidate and the, a big issue in the campaign because well, it was during the 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 Dastiari, uh when it was revealed that he, he tipped off uh, uh, Hang Jengimo that their phones were being monitored by ASIO it was when he was on his last legs Dastiari and they were passing the foreign interference laws and Christina Kelly and Bill Shorten were saying, oh, they're very uh, China-phobic, uh, uh, this uh, co coalition government trying to, because John Alexander had built up quite a, a following in the, the Asian community there. I think it centered on Ride, that, that seat. But yeah, that, that was, okay. there was a lot of uh, race cards played during that campaign and a lot of uh, campaigning in local Asian media. It's not that it's just Chinese there, there's also the Koreans there as well. And that was sort of their sort of first taste of uh, courting the, the just one racial still minority in who are concentrated in, in, in one electorate. There was a lot of pandering and the Liberals retained that seat with a 5% swing against them and John Alexander was re-elected and Christina Keneally got Sam Dastiari's center spot. Okay. Yeah, it's it's no doubt even even uh, more of a uh, Chinese and Korean area these days and it seems to be building every day. If you go up to uh, Chatswood, it's very uh, it, it has to be it has to be infiltrated by the Chinese Communist Party. It has to be. Now, because you're a Sydney sider, I'm not sure how uh, familiar you are with the electorate of, of Chisholm in Melbourne that Gladys Liu uh, represents. Um, you won't be able to hear this, but do you mind if I play the... This is during the federal election campaign because the Labour candidate for that seat was Jennifer Yang, also Chinese-Australian, connected to the same groups as Gladys Liu. So I just want to play what uh, SBS uh, broadcast uh, the, the battle for Chisholm. The Melbourne seat of Chisholm is poised to make history. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Both major party candidates are in a race to become the first Chinese-Australian woman in federal parliament's lower house. Labor's Taiwan-born Jennifer Young says she'd be honoured to claim that title. I think it's about time uh, our parliament reflect the modern Australian, uh, reflect the diversity of our country. I love Chisholm. Yeah. 
The Liberal Party is also chasing that record. Hi, I'm Gladys. Gladys Liu migrated from Hong Kong 33 years ago and says her cultural heritage makes her relatable to locals. A lot of them are very excited um, because, well, knowing the, the candidates who can speak uh, not only English but also uh, Mandarin and Cantonese, that's my first language, um, that made it easier for some of them to communicate. The marginal seat once held by Julia Banks is among the country's most linguistically and racially diverse. One in five voters here is of Chinese heritage. The contest has already made history, with the first federal election debate conducted in English and Mandarin. In the New South Wales seat of Barara, Greens candidate Monica Tan is proud of her Chinese heritage. Dis Okay, so that's the end of Chisholm there, but yes, it, they had a, a debate <clears throat> in Chisholm, which was in English and Mandarin, uh, even though English is the official language in this, this one seat, they had a, a bilingual uh, debate, so, which, which is pretty incredible. And the reason why I know Chisholm so well is because it's uh, the electorate right next to where this studio is, and so it's very close. Uh, to where we are, and you should be able to see this. Have you got Have you got the the stream in the background where you are? I did see it. Yes. yes okay. Because I'm just going to bring up the uh, ABS st statistics about uh, Chisholm. I nearly <laughs> mispronounced that. Oh, I've got to bring it up the other side. Here we go. Here. Uh, so it's 2016 census quick stats on on Chisholm. So it's a slightly more female electorate but if we go down here to people cultural language and uh, uh, diversity so ancestry top responses chinese uh 19.7 percent and then you've got second and third english and australian rest are all well, irish and scottish all anglo-celtic country of birth australia 40 49.4 percent but you have China, 14.2%. Uh, and go down further, uh, both parents born overseas, it's a majority of the electorate, 566 And both parents born in Australia are 29.3%, so it's almost two to one there. Then father and mother there, religious affiliations, no religion is the, the highest, around third. Still a largely Christian electorate. Uh, languages, a top responses other than language, 15.6% uh, is Mandarin, then 4.8% Cantonese, and uh, what was it Greek? There's, there was no Greek candidates there, they're 4.6% Greek speakers. Where, where's the Greek representation there? I think, I think uh, the difference between the Mandarin and the Cantonese, there's your, uh, that's the stat that you need. Hmm. Well, in that, um, hang on, I've got to bring bring you back in now. Uh, Jennifer Yang, she is not uh, Chinese herself. She's from Taiwan, but she's been, uh, she, she's a member of these same groups that Gladys, Gladys Liu is, who's from Hong Kong. And going back to the, the ICAC, the, the $100,000 donation from Hang Drangimo and the, the Audi bag, the, the alleged facilitator of that, uh, Ernst Wong, who was a former Labour State MP, he was from Hong Kong, born in Hong Kong, but you know, this is CCP, Chinese mainland business. Well, okay, so if, if we were going to uh, infiltrate China, reverse it, would we send an Aussie with a cowboy hat from the outback? Or would we try and find a Chinese person uh, that wouldn't necessarily pit, fit the James Bond mold to try and infiltrate them properly? And, and the, the very fact that a lot of the media is mentioning, oh, she's from Hong Kong, so therefore she's safe, is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> uh, or someone from Taiwan. Taiwan is flooded with the CCP. They, they've got their own, uh, they, they've got their own political parties trying to overtake uh, Taiwan from within. Uh, Hong Kong has has been infiltrated with the Chinese since the 50s. <laughs> so, so, so the idea that someone from Hong Kong, oh, well, they're fine then, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, someone from uh, Malaysia could infiltrate us and be a CCP 
uh, spy. Uh, Scott Morrison could be a CCP spy for all I care. Uh, it doesn't matter where they came from; they can be turned. Uh, and I think I think it's un- it's it's important for us to understand that this is when we're looking at Gladys Liu. Uh, this is a reason why I'm not. Uh, I'm not int- that interested in Gladys Liu or the finer details in that because I feel like what we're doing was we're trying to the seas coming in and what we're doing is we're trying to patch up the wall. Yeah. Uh, Gladys Liu is the beginning of a million of these. And if if a Hong Konger doesn't work, they're going to send a, a, a Russian at us. They're going to... Uh, as, turn a, a British-born Chinese background person at us. They're, this is going to continue until they get the prime minister that they want and they effectively destroy our democracy from within. But one of the stats there was uh, it was like 40%, something like 40% were Chinese, yet it, it, the, m- most other people were Australian or English or Irish. Uh, what that's, well, fascist, Fascist. The, the definition of fascist is uh, a bundle of sticks, and they they're so tight together that you can't break them. And and such a small population of Chinese were able to uh, put two <laughs> two people against each other who were both pretty much the same. So it didn't yeah. really matter because uh, if they both had the same background and they they're both possibly spies, <laughs> uh, the, the CCP wins either way. Yeah, and, and the minority, and this they're very they're very active. I also like to put together another pattern here is that uh, Sam Dastiari he um, he escaped this awful his parents escaped an awful war zone, and, and his parents came here and they obviously realized look we need to uh, push our son into politics and gain power. So people that escape uh, an an awful situation like a genocide. They want their children to become powerful. And that's a warning as well, because when you look at Gladys Berejikli and her parents uh, came from a, an Armenian genocide. What, what do we have? We're, and, and the problem here is that the Australian people are not motivated enough to take control of our own country. And if we're not careful, the small 1% of Chinese will rule over us the same way they do it in Indonesia the same way they do it in Malaysia, the same way they do it in many countries in a, in or all over Asia, uh, if we're not careful. Yeah, that's that's certainly right. And our polit- political class now are playing catch up because the the media has now latched onto this that there's been this CCP infiltration uh, for 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 decades. And I think John yeah. Howard is probably the the most complicit prime minister with his uh, neutral China policy. And going back to Sam Dastyari, that's what I was going to say. He just wanted to get the money off the the Chinese. Uh, businessman, he was he was just a fool, naive, and got got sucked into it because he wanted to be the, the the bag man, and that's why he got up at that press conference and thought he could get away with contradicting national policy. But I don't think our politicians are completely captured yet in the same way that the New Zealand ones are completely subservient to the the Chinese Communist Party, but. Like the nation as a whole, Australian politicians are now in a shit sandwich. They're already, like, uh, they they don't. A lot of them don't know who they're meeting with when they're meeting Chinese Australian community leaders. And yeah, it's they uh, 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 they've obviously got a lot to get their head around if they want to try and reverse this. Yeah, well, uh, Scott Morrison uh, has appeared. Uh, he, he did an interview with one of my most hated media organizations in Australia called Sydney Today. And they are a Chinese Communist Party run stooge for Xi Jinping. They've, they've written several articles on me. And if you translate the comments underneath, it's white pig, we hate Australia. And these and then straight after that, you have uh, people like uh, our prime minister being interviewed by these people. It is an absolute disgrace. 
And they write articles all the time, just putting down Australia. This is uh, Sydney today. They're based in Sydney. They're, they're, a, they're a Chinese Communist Party run stooge. And it, and is, it is uh, absolutely ridiculous that uh, so many Australian politicians uh, are being uh, interviewed by these uh, media organisations that don't have our best interests at heart. It's it, they're not aware of what's going on at all. Yeah, and Scott Morrison he took to to WeChat the the Chinese social media to defend uh, Gladys Liu. And Gladys Liu during the 2016 federal election she used WeChat to promote the then Liberal candidate Julia Banks. Now it's just described in the media as the the Chinese version of Facebook, but what is it really? Well, WeChat, when you download that app, it watches everything that you do. There is one billion people on WeChat. It is no joke. There's a lot of people on this app. And I, 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 I'm, I recently saw in, uh, in the news that Huang Xingmo, his, uh, his bank accounts are being frozen, uh, which I thought was great because I've mentioned that before. I actually mentioned it uh, with Steel, that that's one of the tools that we have at our disposal. Uh, another tool that we have at our disposal is blocking WeChat in every Western country. And, and I'm just waiting for the moment that uh, uh, the United States steps in and we have a huge attack on WeChat the same way that they had on Huawei. WeChat needs to go and, and we need to do something about it. But uh, if I can think about it, I guarantee you that ASIO and the CIA, they're all watching it very closely. And and I think it's it's so naive if, I, I, have, I have no idea, but if Scott Morrison has WeChat downloaded on his damn phone and then he put <laughs> And then he puts that at, uh, next to his bed and he, he has private conversations with his wife or he, he carries that phone around and has uh, talks about national security. That phone with that app WeChat is recording what he says. I don't have WeChat on any of my phones for a very good reason. <laughs> it's dangerous. They, they, can, they can gather information from you. Well, I still take the, the libertarian perspective that you can't just ban a social network, even though it is like a spy a ring, uh, basically. Like, if you're stupid enough to download WeChat and put all your personal information on it, uh, then, you know, you're just a sucker. <laughs> People have said in the chat that, oh, so WeChat's just like Facebook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that is, a yeah, for you guys at home listening to me talk, you're probably thinking, oh, well, he's got double standards. Well, how's this for a good metaphor? We all have a football team. And, and do you complain when your props do a good hit up? Or do you just think, oh, no, we shouldn't do a hit up. We shouldn't tackle them either. We don't want to We don't want to hurt the other team. It depends on what team you're on. Their team is WeChat. Their team, if it wins, will uh, take away our freedom take away, uh, gather data on us and use it against us. I like Facebook because it's gathering data on our enemies. I like my props doing the biggest hit up possible. I like to be 10 times more powerful than Indonesia and China. I don't want to be uh, the little weakling that gets run over by their props. Uh, and, and, and that's a big uh, that's also arrogance from on the Australian people's part because they just think, oh, well, we're so powerful that we we uh, we don't have to worry about anything. They can't hurt you. But they can hurt you, and they're, they're coming for you. Uh, one thing I liked when I went to Indonesia recently to check it out was that uh, the majority of people can't afford data over there. So... Facebook gives you free data. All you need is a SIM card. So what they do is they get every single person in Indonesia on Facebook and Facebook owns WhatsApp. So they're gathering data 
on, you know, 200 million Indonesians. Who does that benefit? It benefits Australia because we're part of Five Eyes. Just because the Australian people don't know what's really going on and how dangerous all these things are, if, if, if WeChat can gather your personal information, they can use it against you in a multitude of ways that you could not imagine. Yeah, it's... Uh, this is the, the the downside of the the modern uh, technical age that it's so uh, easy to basically monitor people not that or well, you can just go like people volunteer their their information i mean i still like the the digital age but it, but it's certainly uh, th there's certainly a lot of uh, side effects to it now you mentioned uh, asio which has uh, ba basically their primary uh, like they see their primary occupation now is protecting Australia from foreign interference, i.e. China, and they've been warning politicians for years, uh, be careful around these Chinese uh, businessmen because they've got links to the, the, the Communist Party. You mentioned that ASIO, they, they vetted the, the, the list uh, of the fundraiser that uh, Gladys Liu held with, uh, was going to hold with Malcolm Turnbull, and uh, obviously... Uh, Sam Sam Dastiari, like who who would have known that he he'd said for to leave our leave our phones inside unless somebody else was listening on, on the other side and we we also saw the outgoing ASIO boss uh, Duncan Lewis he basically said I'm glad our agency is beginning to educate the public about uh, the the threat of a foreign interference and. What struck me about it is that he was basically saying that uh, our, our political class, they've, they're, they've basically been corrupted uh, by this foreign interference and that it's, it's basically our job to, uh, f you know, pick up the ball and basically go directly to the public, which is government agencies, they, they report to the government, they don't, they don't go to the public, which was, that, that, that was, that was quite uh, fascinating that you basically have sort of a, a, a separate arm of government basically safeguarding the nation uh, separate from the politicians themselves. Yeah, well, uh, I, I guess that is good news that they eventually... Uh, I feel like a decade ago we, we could have been talking about this. We, we should have been talking about this straight after Julian Assange's uh, WikiLeaks because everybody knew what was going on back then in 2007, 2008. Uh, but we, we decide to wait such a long time. And the, the, reason, the reason why, you, you can imagine why they didn't go to the public sooner is because I have noticed just in the last six months, if you look on social media, there is outrage at the subversion within Australia, but these people were literally blind six months ago. And, and there's been this huge wave of people and, and paranoia. And, and that's, that's part of the problem. The paranoia starts to, you, you can't control the paranoia sometimes. It can mutate into things that you don't expect. And, that, and, and, and that's why uh, I guess politicians and uh, people in the know try to avoid speaking to the public because they, they don't know where it's going to go sometimes. But uh, when ASIO comes forward and speaks out the way they have been, and, and, and they've been giving talks too, and they've been talking about how we are being uh, infiltrated uh, by uh, uh, cyber criminals from the CCP as well, and, and, and how... Uh, tough it is for ASIO to even defend itself at the moment. Um, it's uh, we we're at a war. At, uh, this this is not just an economic war. This is not just a geopolitical war. This is uh, the, this is a cyber war. This is uh, a soft power war. The, the, there's so many. Uh, this is a multi pronged war that is happening right now. Uh, and what's happening right now in Iran, uh, there's three main countries that are of importance to Australia, and that's obviously China, it's Russia, and, and, and Iran. Now, what's happening in Iran, I just want to touch on this. I know I've drifted off topic, but it is connected. 
we are waiting to see what China does. Keep in mind that what's happening with Iran is connected directly to China. We want to cut off their oil supply. We want to shut down Iran, and and it does, and and, and it, even in the the public sphere, uh, they were talking publicly in the news about uh, our uh, us only having a month's supply of fuel. They were talking about that before it heated up with Iran. That's not an accident. People behind the scenes knew what was coming. And, it's, and and we've diversified since then. Uh, it's not all coming from Singapore. Our, our jet fuel is uh, diversified a little bit. We get a bit from South Korea and Japan as well, just in case something happens to one of those countries. Uh, but, but we apparently only have 30 days supply. And, and keep in mind, uh, if something does happen to our oil supply or fuel supply, the general public will be the last people to get it. Uh, it will go directly to the military and uh, other most important parts. The, the, the Australian people will be the last to get hold of it. But uh, we're kind of collateral damage when it comes to this geopolitics. We need to play our, play our part, unfortunately. Um, the Hong Kong protests, they're kind of still ongoing, even though Carrie Lam has uh, withdrawn the, the proposed extradition bill to mainland China completely. Um, but uh, the Australian government uh, didn't end up taking a position to side with the, the pro-democracy protesters. There was just a, a ginger group on the, the Liberal backbench, uh, people like Andrew Hasty, who who's op-ed uh, about uh, how we need to face the threat of China. That really turbocharged this uh, issue into political focus in Australia and got not, not the political class of the public talking about it. And so he's been joined by Tim Wilson, uh, James Patterson, Amanda Stoker, and Dave Sharma. They've, they, they all spoke about what's happening at the universities with uh, chi uh, Chinese students uh, being a, a, a large revenue source for the, the universities, with the Conf and they've got the Confucius Institutes as well. And uh, that is a nas another national uh, security issue. And so, yeah, as you said, there's, there's so much that we've, we've got to get on top of. And we can do that by setting the rules. We need to set the rules and make sure that there are rules for people who come to Australia, which we have not done. Uh, I guess if I was uh, in charge a long time ago, there would have been rules for everybody entering the country. It wouldn't have just been, uh, it's not human nature to appreciate it when you give them freebies. They appreciate it when they earn it. So when someone comes to Australia and we hand over not only citizenship, but Medicare and all of the freebies that go with our clean air and our, our, our democracy and freedom, these people don't necessarily appreciate it. They, they feel like, okay, now it's my, if, Someone born in Australia should not have to compete with someone that has just received citizenship because they don't in America. In America, you have to earn your place and you have to prove yourself all the time. But in Australia, it seems like uh, we have all of these people who are first generation Australians or they're immigrants to Australia and they get into politics and they start uh, pulling the strings on how we're going to be ruled. And, and that is totally outrageous from my point of view. Someone that, if you if you look at where uh, Gladys Berejiklian's parents came from, or if you have a look at Iran right now, where they have signs up of martyrs that blow themselves up, their parents came from that background and their children are ruling this country. They, they, these are not necessary, that's not the type of, it depends on how you see, see the world. Do you see it as uh, nature or nurture? 
um, I see nurture as a very important factor and uh, we need to set the rules. Pete, and, and, and you mentioned this before, you mentioned this before about uh, maybe uh, not questioning people's loyalty to the country. I'm, I'm the opposite. I believe that everybody should be questioned. I don't care if Scott Morrison's daddy was a copper, his loyalty needs to be questioned and it's uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, his loyalty, loyalty to this country is in question right now. So it doesn't matter what colour you are or where, where you are from, your loyalty needs to be questioned and people need to fear the Australian people. Well, a lot of, not just politicians in Australia, but in various Western countries, I mean, they're globalists. They, they, want to, they, they put the interests of uh, basically the overarching uh, like geopolitical uh, goal. And uh, what, what you said about uh, you know, what it means to be uh, an Australian, that's becoming a more popular view shared quietly. Uh, but again, it's not something that anyone would dare espouse on uh, Sky News, for example. It will. It's coming. <laughs> because, because people uh, behind closed doors talk about these things. And with every little bit of subversion in Australia, they are becoming more boisterous and I can see it. I'm watching social media closely. I'm speaking to people who are, uh, got their fingers on the pulse and things are going to change. Uh, the, 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 the thing is we need to educate the Australian people as to how serious this is and I don't think they are fully aware of how serious this is. Well, let's uh, summarize the, uh, the current uh, focus of the, the, the China-Australia tension, which is, is Gladys Liu. There's a lot of talk whether she'll last the, the full term because Scott Morrison has basically gone in and defended her fer fer ferociously. Chisholm is a marginal seat. Uh, and, but as I said before, like the reason Gladys Liu is under attack is because she's the winner. If Jennifer Yang had won, she'd be the one in the hot seat. But it just she'd just be a, a Labour MP. I I don't see Gladys Liu uh, resigning, but like obviously when it comes to the next uh, federal election, because there's been a lot of uh, James Campbell from the Herald Sun has done a lot of reporting on uh, fund uh, fundraising she's she's done where that's come from uh, donations she hasn't uh, declared, and some Victorian Liberal Party money had to be returned be uh, because of national security concerns and then her local branch uh, wanted to relax uh, foreign investment laws. So where do you see Gladys's, Gladys Liu's future political career going and you know, if she falls or she stays, like what's the significance of that? It's finished and if she doesn't go, Scott Morrison will go. Uh, Michael Daly said that immigrants are taking our jobs. <laughs> Something uh, which is a fact. It's but he fact. lost the election over it. He, it's a fact and he got fired or he <laughs> resigned or whatever happened to him. It, it, the, the, the problem is that what he said was not as bad as what Gladys Liu has done and it's nowhere near as bad as what Scott Morrison has done either. Uh, and, and Scott Morrison needs to go. If, if Gladys Liu stays and, and Scott Morrison needs to go and we need to send him to China, Shanghai ScoMo. You're bloody ruthless, you are. No, he has to go. He has to go. It's serious. You have to have the faith of the Australian people. We don't vote these pricks in uh, so that they can uh, pander to a foreign government. And, and when China was weak, they didn't pander. That's how they, that's how they were able to rise up. You can't start up a business in mainland China unless you have a local uh, partner. You have to go to Hong Kong and start up your company and then you still need a partner. Uh, things are changing even more so with China, but uh, the Chinese people can come straight here and start up a business and compete with the Australian people. It's just outrageous. We're, we're being beaten at our own game within our own country. 
uh, and our politicians are pandering to the enemy because China is the enemy. The thing is, it might sound outrageous to the Australian people right now, but it's heating up. And if they're not aware of how serious this is, it is going to get so serious that uh, some big shocks are going to happen to the Australian public. And, and they're, they're going to be shocked when things happen. It's only going to get worse. And the Australian people need to wake up now and start protecting themselves. And we need to protect ourselves from ruthless authoritarian governments, as in our government. Our government will uh, eventually become more and more authoritarian if we allow this to happen. Uh, the Australian people. Think, <laughs> it, it, the, well, this is this is this is where the pattern leads if we don't keep on top of it. Well, I certainly agree that our our government is becoming authoritarian, and that's just not all down to to China itself. But well, if if they become our masters, Chinese Communist Party, yeah, who knows what's possible? I, everyone in the live chat has absolutely loved uh, what you've said. They've they've loved you as a guest on the the second episode because this is on a on a brand new channel. Though a lot of them have come over from the uh, the Unshackled uh, channel, but for a lot of people, this is their first introduction to you. So you'll definitely be invited back. There'll probably be another uh, uh, Chinese Communist Party scandal uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, and there's... Well, you've actually got a few fangirls uh, in this chat as well, so <laughs> they want your number. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good night, uh, Dave. Glad we could uh, finally chat uh, in the end. And yeah, uh, everyone go over to your channel. Now, it's it's just called Dave Lee, which is, is actually hard yeah. to find because there's so many Dave Lees and some are actually mm -hmm. Chinese. Yeah, I guess you, you just type in Dave Lee and then uh, scroll down. Or you can just wait on this channel and uh, there will be another drama next week and then every day from then on, and uh, we can discuss everything that's happening here. Uh, on my channel, I complain as well. I complain everywhere. Mm. Let's just put it. Yes, but you, you're a unique complainer, like, and like, like I said, like you're much more hardcore than what any other per commentator would say on China. Oh, well, I guess that's... When, when you start talking about Australian politics, I'm not quite up to date with Australian politics. And the reason why is because I follow Chinese media and follow what's happening in China. And they're right wing. What happens is, this is why I know a lot of Australians like to call what I'm saying right now as right wing, but it's not right wing. Because if you're a Chinese person, you're right wing. I can't go to your country. I can't get a job. I can't. Uh, uh, it's impossible to get a job unless you're an English teacher. I can't immigrate to China. Uh, they, instead of calling themselves conservative, they say we're traditional. And then what happens is these right-wing Chinese people come to Australia, and as soon as they come to Australia, they it's in their best interest. What's their incentive? Their incentive is to get hold of our goodies. So then they become left-wing because they want access to our goodies. So they come here and they say, oh, look, I want to... Uh, I want freedom for all and I want equality. No, what they're saying is it's in my best interest for you to share what you have when I arrive. But if you follow them back to their country, they become right wing again. So what's happening in Australia is we have been, we are being infiltrated by, and I'm effectively in Sydney, I'm a minority as an Australian. Uh, very, very few people uh, are Australian in Sydney. You can walk around George Street and <laughs> I'll, I'll, you'll be able to spot me from 200 meters away. Um, so effectively, I'm left wing within my own country asking for a fair go within my own country. Uh, and, and that's my take on it. That's my take on it. Uh, people could disagree and call me right wing, but I call myself left wing because I'm just asking for a fair go as a minority within my own country, if that makes any sense. Well, you're asking for a fair go. I think, well, that shouldn't just be exclusively left-wing. It just should be, well, common sense and not be yeah. you speak. Yeah. 
All right, I will bid you farewell uh, now, Dave. Uh, take care. Subscribe to his his channel to to keep up to date on basically or everything that uh, we've covered tonight or, and other matters relating to China. All right, catch you later. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.